Chair Rader, would you please offer remarks on behalf of the board? Thank you. At Santa Monica College, we rotate turns as chair of the board of trustees. So the last time I was chair and gave the welcome was in 2008. In 2008, my life was very different. In 2008, I was in my first term as trustee. In 2008, I was younger with darker hair. I was also much thinner. Oddly, I was no less attractive. <laughs> I didn't say attractive, just no less attractive. In 2008, at my law firm, I was having my best year as an outside entertainment attorney. My income had gone up each of the last three years, and I was turning down offers to go in-house because my career was taking off. In 2008, after having wondered whether I would ever find a special someone when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was married to a brilliant and beautiful woman whom I loved. My wedding day was the happiest day of my life. In 2008, I had two children I adored. My son Dashiell was three. My daughter Zora had been born in 2007. So in 2008, I was a leader in my community. My career was taking off, and I had a perfect family life. The future seemed unbelievably bright. You know how this story is going, right? <laughs> in late 2008, things changed. In September 2008, Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, and the Great Recession started. After a few months, my started, I started having bad months as clients could no longer pay, or they just simply went out of business. Many independent producers, my bread and, bre my bread and butter clients, never came back. In 2009, after being kicked out of two preschools, my beautiful son was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and I did the first of many IEPs, individual education plans. In June 2010, after several years of struggle, mostly with each other, my wife and I split up. So at a time when my income had crashed, every possible expense I had was going up, and I struggled to support two households in LA and to shield my kids from our financial troubles and our failed marriage. So from June through October 2010, at four months, I lost my wife, I moved out of my home, and I switched jobs. Over the next year, I'd move another two times, and my ex-wife moved to Redondo Beach, so I'd had to drive an hour to pick up my kids. The speech won't be so much of a downer later on. <laughs> I always had been a high achiever, but for the first time in my life, I didn't think I was going to make it. My new firm started cutting my pay, so I was making less money than I'd made in a decade. I was exhausted trying to make ends meet and trying to generate new business. Every morning I'd go to work and park my car in the garage and just sleep for another 10 minutes. I was so exhausted. According to Bill Gates, success is a lousy teacher. It seduces smart people into thinking they can't lose. Well, I now had the wisdom to realize I certainly could lose. All I could wonder was, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So many nights I had real lows. During these times, I would imagine either my, my late grandfather and take comfort, or my kids, and know I could not give up. And so I didn't. At the end of each year, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, I would look around and see that somehow I'd made it through another year. Honestly, I felt like a cockroach. Somehow the world couldn't kill me off, despite its seemingly best efforts. All I needed was a break, one break. Finally, in 2012, I got that break. Unfortunately, it was in my right knee when I tore my ACL and meniscus. <laughs> By the end of 2012, I was looking to go back in-house. I came very close a number of times on so many occasions. I came up as runner-up to general counsel jobs at Maker Studios and several other big entertainment companies. Each time close, but no cigar. But finally, 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 in fall 2013, things changed again. My ex-wife moved back up north so the kids were much closer. My ex-wife and I became more amicable as we realized we still had certain things in common. For instance, she hated me and I hated me. <laughs> That's a relationship. More importantly, in 2013, I was chosen to become general counsel at Ovation, which is a 
television cable network in 50 million homes that focuses on arts and cultural programming. Millennials out there, stop the cord cutting right now. Stop it. Um, and being in a job I loved and having my children closer, I felt reborn. My company had its best year ever. I won several awards as a general counsel, and my career in finances got back on track. More importantly, my kids have remained happy and healthy, and even my son with autism has done so well that we're discussing ways to reduce the support he gets at school as he becomes better able to cope. Last year was easily the best year of mine for the last five to 10 years, probably the best year of my entire life. So from all these ups and downs, what have I learned? First, I definitely learned something about humility. I think it was a bit unfair to learn that lesson so harshly, but uh, I understand I was being punished for any hubris I had. Often I would have long conversations with the Lord saying, I get the message you're piling on a little bit, Lord, but I will be a better person. Also, I learned something about persistence. I certainly never gave up. When my firm cut my salary, my pay three times in 18 months back in 2012, I redoubled my efforts to find both clients and a new job. I had a consultant that even helped, that, that even told me, you know, they'd never seen anyone work so hard to find a new job, especially taking into account my family responsibilities and my job. On the other hand, what were my options? I had to take care of my family. Many of you, both out in the seats and down here in the bleachers, know and understand this responsibility. Even though I didn't always know how I was going to take care of my family, I just kept putting one foot in front of the other. At Santa Monica College, we have a program to teach people grit and to develop perseverance. And precisely because things change, you have to continue working to take advantage of them when they do change. Thomas Edison said, everything comes to him who hustles while he waits. I say half a life is showing up, the other half is not leaving. So I always hustled, and I urge you not to leave. Third, although there were many times I wanted to, I almost never lost my sense of humor, despite some people's requests at great length. <laughs> and more importantly, I kept my zest for life. I've always believed that the day you can't laugh at other people is the day you have to call it quits. But the true Zen state of grace is when you can laugh at yourself and sometimes even take some kind of pleasure out of your own misery because it's good to experience something. Horace Walpole wrote, this world is a comedy to those that think and a tragedy to those that feel. And I believe that that small change in one's attitude, in one's perspective, can make all the difference. There's one decision that you make at every instant. Am I going to choose to enjoy this moment or not? And may I suggest, humbly because I've learned my lesson, may I suggest to always choose to enjoy it. Why would you ever choose not to?